Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. And I'm going to read some more of our book, uh, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, written by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. But I'd like to get a little bit of feedback from the people that follow this. Uh, I'm not really a scientific person, but what the one thing that's sticking in my head more than anything, other than the cost of $250,000 per cancer, correct me if I'm not wrong, but I think I remember reading for every two rads of radiation, they calculated 32,000 more cancers. Is that how that translated? That's what my brain, from reading this. I went back and read it, and that's kind of, they know. So, anyways, I'm going to get to reading. We're on page, um, I can't read it without my reading glasses. Uh, we are on page 98. The new subtitle is The Public Should Have the Right to Decide, Should, Keyword, Ha <laughs> Ha. The only reasonable choice in the absence of a firm answer is to use the 32,000 calculated deaths in planning whether the technology should even be considered. Pauling realized this clearly. For reasons we shall never understand, we saw these same possibilities set Wait a minute. For reasons we shall never understand, we saw these same possibilities. Said that the risk was between 0 and 32,000, and we took no steps to sound an alarm based on the higher number. It was so obvious to us now that we should have done so. For all future technologies, it is imperative that a similar error not be allowed to occur if a habitable earth is to be preserved. Well, the problem with that is now we can't fucking preserve the earth, maybe. And the more persistent the poison is in the environment, in quotations, and radioactivity persists for hundreds or thousands of years, end of parentheses, the more crucial is this decision for humanity. To decide in any other way must be described as for what it truly is. One apt description is the playing of Russian roulette with the health of the public and the future of the human species on Earth. Another description that, ha that, has, that a high value judgment has been reached. I'm sorry, I'll read that again. Another description is that a value judgment has been reached. Namely, that the benefits of the technology are worth more than the annual murder of 32,000 human beings. Should the promoters of a technology be the ones to make this important decision? They think so, and in a supreme demonstration of arrogance and indifference. From them come such words as, the problem must be left to the experts, or... The public will be alarmed, or the public can't be relied on to understand. Surely the public can understand the numbers 0 to 32,000, and if told the truth, will emphatically say no thanks to the promoter's dream project. And this, not fear of public inability to decide, is precisely why the technology promoters, atomic promoters, foremost among them, don't want the problem put in the hands of the public where it belongs. There exists a favorite game of self-deception engaged in by promoters of technology. The game guarantees by a self-fulfilling prophecy that the technology will not be thwarted. The deception is particularly gratifying to the so-called scientific supporters of the technology. Men who hold excellent grants of large sums of money to do research on health aspects of radiation. And this game goes as follows. Let us suppose people, let us, let us suppose we expose people to a poison such as radioactivity, sufficient to produce one death each year out of every thousand people so exposed. This is a death rate that can be regarded as a calamity of unparalleled proportions. Ten times as big as the entire leukemia incidence in the United States. 
Now, if we expose 100 people to this amount of radioactivity, what do we expect? If there's one death expected in 1,000, then that's only one-tenth of a case in the sample of 100 people. But one cannot observe the one-tenth of a human case. Either we observe no case or one case, two cases, and rarely more than two. If we study 10 separate groups of 100 people, the most likely outcome is to find that one case developing out of all 10 groups of 100 people each. This is true because 10 groups of 100 people add up to 1,000 people. And we have already said we're expecting one case in 1,000 the key issue, which must be understood by every intelligent person, is so easy to understand that anyone is sim by anyone is simply this. If we study only one sample group of 100 people, 9 times out of 10 we won't see that one death due to the poison. And then, lo and behold, the scientific apologists for the technology promoters piously announce. The suspected poison is harmless at this dose. No injury was observed. Hogwash. This dose of poison must be below, quote, safe, unquote, threshold. Eminent hogwash. The effect of so small, the effect is so small it can't be detected except by elaborate statistics. More hogwash. The effect is so small it is negligible and is readily drowned out by more important factors. Absolutely not. No, no, no. All such ludicrous statements have one result, intended or unintended, allaying legitimate concern over a massive threat to health by a product of technology. There is no need to question at all the motives of the scientific apologists or to suggest that they are being deliberately or immorally deceptive. No, the entire structure of thinking and evaluation of poisons or potential poisons has been simply erroneous and deeply embedded in the scheme of things. And unless we get out of this morass, the environment and everything alive in it are headed for trouble of the gravest kind. Wow. In the study cited, the answer is very obvious. If we study too few people, we are bound to fail to observe the correct answer. Do the wrong experiment, and most certainly the wrong result will be obtained. Wrong experiments of this sort, studying too few people or too few experimental animals, are the cornerstone of all erroneous, platitudinous reassurances we have heard from atomic energy promoters. Worse yet, they don't even realize the experiments were the wrong ones. Repeating the wrong experiments over and over. The Division of Biology and Medicine at the AEC has spent a billion dollars ostensibly to determine such answers as the risk of cancer and leukemia from exposure to ionizing radiation. Much of the research is of a high quality, but over and over again it is the wrong experiment that has been done, not once, but over and over again. One can find mountains of published reports on experimental animals given a dose of radiation which produces cancer in 50 to 100 percent of the radiated animals. Of what possible interest are such experiments? Of what possible relevance to the real problem of hazard of radiation exposure? If one thinks for a moment it is plain that radiation doses that provoke cancer in 50 percent of subjects in a brief time period, excuse me, if one thinks for a moment it is plain that radiation doses that provoke cancer in 50% of exposed subjects in a brief time period are obviously enough to wipe out the species. For such profound conclusions, 
We don't need to waste precious time, money, and effort. Okay, so I think I should read that again because this is like serious. If one thing, if if one thinks for a moment, it is plain that radiation doses that provoke cancer in 50% of exposed subjects in a brief time period are obviously enough to wipe out the species. For such profound conclusions, we, do, we don't need to waste precious time, money, and effort. But the experiments that can properly answer the question of production of cancer in one out of a thousand animals, which corresponds to tragedy of unparalleled proportions in man, the experiments are virtually non-existent. What answers does one get in asking why such experiments are not accomplished while totally relevant ones abound? This that would be too difficult. That would take too many animals. Would it? A quick calculation from evidence obtained on groups of animals given high doses of radiation indicates the study of a thousand rats or a few thousand rats would provide ample information. Considering the dollars spend expanded and the fact that rats are not in short supply, the proper experimentation should have been accomplished long ago. Fortunately, the message has begun to sink in and better experiments are now being done. But atomic energy is not alone in its attention to the wrong kinds of experiments. Evaluation of practically every potential toxic subject, substance that is a byproduct of technology has been equally poor, equally devoid of understanding of the real nature of the problem. Wow, the oil and fracking industry, coal. Dr. Sofetti, Scientific Director of Carcinogenesis at the National Cancer Institute, has recently gone right to the heart of the matter in his criticism of studies of cancer-producing properties of toxic chemicals of commerce. And, oh, okay, toxic chemicals of commerce and industry where the scientific investigators set up experiments looking for 2 to 20 percent of animals to get cancer and then label the poison safe at when they don't find 2 to 20 percent cancer. They should be looking for 1 in 1,000 or 1 in 10,000 animals to get cancer if they really want to know something about the poison that is, something truly relevant to health protection. Well, uh, we're at 12, 13 minutes. I think I'll end here. And um, it's getting interesting. I hope somebody answers me. I think from what reading this that I'm right about this. I don't know how we're going to stop it, but... I think awareness did. There's been a lot of great things. Thank you, Miss Milky, for putting up the videos that you've started putting up. They're awesome. And I saw, um, actually, you redid it from the Eon, those people doing the protest out in front of, I don't know, some event in California demanding we're going to take it back and stop the, the horrible, you know, graft. It's really just graft. What the guys say, uh, Californians have to pay $50 billion to San Onofre and get nothing back? Like, for real? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to end here. Ciao, you guys. I hope you have a good night, and um, talk to you soon. Put your courage feet on.